Hello, everyone. Welcome to our mock live class today. My name is Kate Deering. I am an assistant director for recruitment and admissions within Geese Online at Geese College of Business, University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign. I look forward to spending the next hour or so with you. Our time today will be spent providing you an opportunity to learn and understand how live lectures are delivered in our fully online credentials within Geese Online. We offer three online master's degrees, the IMBA, the IMSA, and the IMSM, as well as 11 graduate certificates, which consist of 12 credit hours that are stackable into all three of our master's degrees. These graduate level programs are flexible, they are stackable, affordable, and they're also designed to be specifically online to offer full-time working professionals a high quality degree that works with your busy schedules. Today, you will experience a live session from one of our talented faculty members and also be able to get a little bit of a glimpse into what kind of content is shared within these. Our courses balance a foundational material shared on the Coursera platform with an interactive high engagement component as well. The high engagement component includes a live session or live class, just like we're going to do tonight, um, every week, and many other facets to learning. Just some things like group projects, you'll have faculty office hours, networking, and also just being part of a great university like Illinois. Since we don't have a lot of time today to chat too much about our programs, I am going to share this QR code on your screen. And if you'd like to speak with me or my um, a, our team of admission counselors to discuss your goals and, and whether or not this program is right for you, we would love to connect. Before we get started learning about extending brands to increase value with Professor Hayden Noel, I did want to cover just a few housekeeping items. I see some of you have your cameras turned on. Uh, bravo. As Professor Noel says, the default is cameras on. Um, we do encourage you all to, to turn on your cameras to be able to interact just like you would in one of our live weekly uh, classes. This really helps us engage during our live sessions, and we definitely want to hear from you. Please note that you are all muted in order to minimize background noise during this class. There will be moments, however, when Professor Noel invites you to participate and our technical team will unmute your microphone for you. If you have questions, please use the raise hand feature and we will call on you. We will have one breakout session today, uh, which will allow you to participate with your fellow session attendees. Go ahead and introduce yourself and then dive into the assignment in your breakout rooms. And then lastly, we invite you to feel comfortable participating in the chat. I will also be available to answer any program type questions that you have there. On to our live session today. Our instructor for today's session is Professor Hayden Noel, Clinical Associate Professor of Business Administration. Hayden began his career at the University of Illinois in 2007. And in addition to teaching, recently has taken on a new role within GEESE as a case development coordinator and also GEESE graduate programs ambassador. He's actively engaged in research and his interests include consumer information processing and memory. His most recent publication, Self-Directed Learning Online, was awarded the Outstanding Article of the Year in Journal of Marketing Education in 2021. Professor Noel has been on the list of professors ranked as excellent for 15 years and was named Executive MBA Program Professor of the Year in 2016. He received the Professional MBA Teaching Excellence Award in 2017 and was named IMBA Professor of the Year in 2018 and 19. Finally, he earned his PhD in marketing from the University of Florida in 2002. So I hope everyone enjoys the, your, your time here with us tonight, and I'm going to turn it over to Professor Hayden Noel. Hi, all. Can you hear me? Give me a thumbs up if you can. Thumbs up. Wonderful. Well, I can only see about 20 thumbs. So that means one of two things. Really invite you, as I said, if you, if you don't have the camera on, put your thumbs up electronically. Lovely. I also invite you to... Uh, a, as I said, the default is cameras on. If you can't, that's fine. You can opt out. But if you can upload a photograph of yourself, so you can at least see with whom you're speaking. I mean, I love to speak to Zoom user, but uh, I don't know if you call you Zoom or user. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's tough for me. So I just want to reach you and engage you like we would in a live session. Um, again, 
the default is Amazon, but you can opt out. You don't need to um, do anything, but uh, we'd love to see you if we can. It does help us engage. And if you can't, you can um, upload a photo of yourself so we can just see with whom we speak. All right, lovely. So let's begin. And thank you. Thank you so much, Kate, for having me. And thanks for a wonderful introduction. I, I really appreciate it. You know, I, I do what I love here. This is something I really enjoy. So I got the chance to join you here today. I really jumped at the opportunity. It's something that I really, really enjoy doing, interacting with students. All right, so let us start. Because we don't have much time, I'm going to go straight to the PowerPoint. Okay, um, give me a thumbs up, Eric Olson, if you can see this. Eric Olson, lovely, wonderful. I like I like this group, Kate. Let them all in the program. I like this group, except Zoom user. I don't know who Zoom user is, so I cannot recommend Zoom user. I don't know. I have no idea. All right. If anyone applies and hit Mr. or Miss user, let them in as well. All right. So let us move forward. So today we're going to talk about one aspect of marketing that I really love. Um, it's about brand extensions. When, when I was in, in uh, corporate America, I worked with a company called Bozell Jacobs Kenyon Eckhart, Bozell Worldwide. And we had some lovely, some interesting campaigns. One I loved the most was the Milk Mustache campaign. I worked on that campaign for about four or five years. Um, I can't take the credit for the creative aspect of it, but I actually was the account um, executive on that campaign. We really loved working there. Um, we encountered quite a few challenges, but I also worked on a couple of the brands like Dodge. And one of the cars I worked on was Dodge Neon, which was an extension from the previous Dodge automobiles that they had. So let's talk about what extensions are. And that campaign, by the Dodge Neon campaign, went very, very well. Um, quite interesting. But let's talk about if, uh, extending your brand, extending your brand. So what do we do today? I'll ask you about the top global brands. And by the way, when I ask questions, I don't expect you to have the perfect answer. So don't go on your phone and check and all of that. You know, just see if you can think about these responses. All right? It, it, you, you know, you don't get a, a extra points. I just want to engage you and see if you do know. Evaluating extensions. Develop a brand extension. You'll do that later on. You will have to be able to develop a brand extension with your colleagues in this class. I will say class because I think of it as a class. Now, I want you to think here, what are the top four global brands? You can either type in the chat or put your hand up. Or maybe, you know what, just type in the chat one of the top four, all of the top four. What do you think of the top four global brands from last year? Top four. Type in the chat. What are the top four? All right, for some reason, let me try this again. Oh, there we go. Amazon, Microsoft, Amazon, Microsoft, Apple, Alphabet. Alphabet, Google, Coca-Cola, Amir says. Lovely, lovely, interesting. Samsung, who said Samsung? That's interesting. Apple, Apple, a lot of Apple. Facebook, no, Facebook didn't make it. Nike, Joe Mahoney. Joe, we actually have a professor here, Professor Joe Mahoney. Is he related to you? Exact same name. Joe Mahoney. Is Joe Mahoney related to you? You don't, where's Joe Mahoney? Joe, you can unmute yourself. Could we unmute Joe, please? I didn't. I've asked him to mute. Okay. Joe, don't be shy. All right, Joe, we'll move on. That was just a quick aside. We have to continue. All right. Uh, several of you listed companies that make um, consumer goods, typical consumer goods. Uh, quite a few of you listed. Um, someone said Arsenal. Who is that? Who said Arsenal? That is wonderful. Tapio. Tapio, why would you say Arsenal? Why could I, uh, any, any reason, type in the chat. Did someone tell you I love Arsenal? I think that might be it. Someone, you must have figured that out. Well, let's look at the top four global brands. Google. <laughs> Microsoft was number three. 
Number two was Amazon. And number one was Apple. So you're correct. All those had Nike and Coca-Cola and so on. These typical consumer goods, goods uh, companies or package good companies actually are no longer in the top five. Some of them are no longer in the top 10 companies that don't make those typical types of goods and provide services, especially tech-based services, are the ones that have increased in value. Which one you think is the fifth? Biggest global brand, the fifth of the, the of these the top five. Which one? Type in the chat, please. Type in the chat. No, no, no. Walmart. No, no, no. Don't think of don't think of typical companies that make consumer packaged goods. Like um, Tesla is way off, by the way. And I think Tesla might now be number eighty eight or eighty nine. The way they're losing value, I don't know. All right, I'll do it. Berkshire have ah Soraya, Soraya, it's Samsung. Excellent, excellent. Amir went with Ray Ban. Interesting, that is way off too. But Soraya, great job. It is Samsung. It's Samsung, another tech-based firm. All right, that's wonderful. Now the thing about global brands, these brands are all very strong brands, and these strong brands provide the company that manufactured them with advantages. And these advantages include things like greater loyalty from consumers. You also are better protected in times of crises, global and local and domestic. And it also helps you, enables you to create or generate what are known as brand extension opportunities. These actually help leverage the existing associations of the brand and actually make, make the, the life of the brand, it increases or extends the life of the brand. When you can extend the brand, you have other opportunities to enhance brand value. Now, the terms brand extension and line extension, we use them interchangeably. We use them interchangeably. However, they're different. Does anyone know the difference between a brand and a line extension? Type in the chat if you do, or put your hand up. Put your hand up, please. Put your hand up electronically. And don't look it up online. Just put your hand up if you know. Please. Or as my grandmother used to say, please and thanks. She'd tell you please in advance and thank you if you can deliver all in one sentence. Could you do that for me, please and thanks? I'm like, yeah, I didn't do it yet. Could you put your hand up? Anyone knows the difference? Om, Steve, Tang, anyone knows the difference? Okay, let's talk about the difference between a brand and life extension. Remember, this helps brands lengthen their lifespan. It helps them increase their footprint across the world when they're able to launch extensions. Hmm, okay, Shane, good. Okay, Cesar, close, 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 close. This is wonderful. Lala, what statement do you love? Oh, please and thank you. Yes, yes, please and thanks, please and thanks. Very West Indian. I'm from Trinidad and Tobago. It's a very West Indian, uh, I guess it's all over the world, but primarily in the Caribbean. Brand extensions, these are cool when uh, a company actually creates or develops a product using the same brand name, but in a totally different category, totally different. That's a brand extension. So for instance, Nike, Nike is known for athletic shoes, athletic wear. And do you know Nike actually launched a perfume for women? They also launched a cologne. Neither did very well. You don't want to smell like sweat. You do not want to smell like you just played basketball or football, or soccer. Hey, you just played a game? No, nah, it's Nike, it's New Cologne. That, that's not, uh, <laughs> they're not well known for this. So none of the associations that you relate to Nike easily transfer to the extension, right? When you think of Nike, what comes to mind? Type in the chat. When you think of Nike, what comes to mind? Type in the chat, please. Let me see. MJ, shoe, swoosh, shoe, shoe. You want to smell like a shoe, dear thing? Who wants to smell, oh, right? Who wants to smell like a shoe? No one. So you can't transfer these things. Shoes, shoes. No. 
apparel, hmm, dominance. Ah, Miguel, that's interesting. That might be something like a transfer, but I'm not sure yet. I'm wearing my new cologne. I'm dominant. I don't know. I don't know. It might not transfer well, right? So if you things like suave or cool or whatever, yeah, those things might. But none of the associations or very few of them actually transfer from the parent brand to the extension. And that's critical here. So that's a brand extension, a completely different category. Mm -hmm. Completely different category. Line extension is within the same category. When you launch product within the same category. So Coca-Cola launching Diet Coke or launching Diet Cherry Coke or launching Diet Vanilla Coke or Vanilla Coke or all of these other things, that's a line extension. Someone said Coca-Cola launched Dasani. Dasani is not an extension. Why would you, why would, can you tell me anyone why the Sony water, even though it's made by Coke, is not neither brand nor line extension? Neither brand nor line extension. Anyone? Different brand, Rob. Rob, you are spot on. It's a different brand. It's not Coca Cola, the Sony water. It's just the Sony. So, you are not transferring any of the associations from the Coca-Cola brand to the water. That's the important thing. When you think of an extension, you have the parent brand present, obvious, and apparent on the product, and you transfer the app. That happens almost subconsciously. In your mind, you see the brand, the product is branded this, the extension is branded with Nike or Coca-Cola, you transfer the association. Whatever you thought of Nike or Coca-Cola actually is now is, is applied to the extension. With the Sony water with no Coca-Cola brand, there's nothing to transfer. Nothing to transfer. Wonderful, Rob. Rob, you are in. You are in, Rob. You're in like Flynn or you're in like Rob. All right. So... Let's think about the advantages of the brand, and, uh, brand la slash line extensions. Let me, let me warn you or tell you, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I am actually, I uh, cough a little bit, I'm actually recovering from COVID-19, it's still a thing. And because I promised Kate I'd do this, I continued, I was telling her I'm actually not my enthusiastic self, but you folks gave me a bit of energy here. I was gonna do this sitting, change my mind just for you. So I still have that residual cough, so I will uh, have a bunch of uh, mints that I'm trying to take here, but excuse me, or bear with me for a minute while I cough and so on. Um, so one of the advantages of launching a brand online extension is that you get the money from the sales, increased sales, the, and also the probability of success is higher, especially if you have a strong brand. If you have a very strong brand, you launch a product, you've done your research, the associations transfer, you could get a lot of money in sales. However, disadvantage is you can actually dilute the brand. Dilute the brand, you weaken the brand. Think of it. Think of that lemonade that you buy from the neighborhood kids on a summer that tastes like water. You don't really get the lemon, the lemony taste. That's dilution right there. Brand dilution works in that same way. You're weakening the brand and some of you're watering it down. In people's minds, they now perceive the brand to be watered down if the extension does not work, right? So if Nike launch after shoes, they launch Nike Cologne, then Nike Surgical Instruments, right? Then um, what else could they have launched? Uh, Nike Lighting, and all these things that do not truly leverage the strength of Nike, Nike could have watered down their brand, right? They quickly pulled the cologne. I don't know if you could buy it anywhere yet still, but I don't see it anywhere. Now, how does an extension, okay, 619, how are extensions successful? What helps to enhance chance of, the chance of success of an extension? the ease with which the associations can, can transfer from parent brand to the extension. So think of this, Nike, Nike uh, shoe brand, 
when they launch Nike equipment or different types of Nike shoes. Nike, um, they first start with running shoes, Nike basketball shoes, Nike pickleball shoes, all of these things, the associations can transfer easily, sporty, quality, athletic, right? All of those can transfer. Nike surgical equipment, Nike lights, right? None of those really can transfer easily. Oh, I have a very sporty light. You should see it. Works really well. It's very athletic. Does not transfer well. So the ease with which association transfers can lead to more positive evaluation and success, right? Um, research done by Buchner and Sattler actually examined this very phenomenon where they looked at the fit of an extension with the parent brand. The fit, right? And what they found, Mary Newhouse, was that when the transfer was very easy, like Clorox and Clorox disinfecting wipes, the brand extension was rated or evaluated positively. It would be a success, right? Clorox making wipes. But if you have Clorox and they make Clorox orange juice, can someone tell me which associations might transfer? Let's just see. Type in the chat. When you think of Clorox, what comes to mind? Clorox. Clorox. Clean, germs, bleach, chemical wipes, bleach. Right. So you have all of these, and those can transfer to disinfecting wipes very easily, right? They can. They can transfer to disinfecting wipes very easily. However, hygiene, disinfect. Do any of these associations transfer to orange juice? Now, Shane, Shane Powell, Gabrielle London, any of these associations transfer orange juice? No, no, they don't. So Clorox orange juice is not going to be a hit. It's not going to be a hit because the associations don't transfer well, right? They don't. I mean, do you want very clean or hygienic orange juice? No, you don't, Amir. You don't. You want tasty. And no one ever says, my Clorox is very tasty. So... Associations that transfer very easily lead to more positive evaluations. So Clorox to Clorox wipes. Great fit. Now, let's get into the meat of this very short lecture. I, I, of course, I've skipped a lot of steps, right? <laughs> I can't give you a full lecture because our lectures uh, our class is usually 90 minutes long, about one, 45 minutes to an hour of lecture, and about half hour of you working with each other on assignments in class and so on. It's going to be about 20, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and about 15 working on an assignment. Right, Kate? About, well, we'll see. We'll see how much time. So the flow framework is what we use to evaluate extensions regarding their potential for success. Flow means fit. L is for leverage and O, opportunity. Let me describe these three. Fit, you have to remember this. Maybe you want to jot that down. Take a note, make notes, make notes, because you will be working on an assignment, right? And you might not know this, but Kate is going to send those assignments to me and I'll evaluate them and say, yeah, let this person in. No, turn this person away. Let this person in. So she will actually not do that, but let's try on the assignment first. All right. Flow framework. Write this down, please. Fit leverage opportunity. What is fit? How stretchable is it? Is the brand a logical fit? Is the extension, that is, a logical fit with the parent brand? Is the extension a logical fit? Clorox wipes, logical fit. The associations transfer. They jump easily. Clean, disinfect. All these things move from Clorox bleach, the brand Clorox, when you think of, to Clorox wipes. They do not fit with orange juice. So you have to think how easy do the associations transfer from the parent brand to the extension? And remember, association simply means what comes to mind when you think of the brand. That's association. What comes to mind when you think of the brand? So that's fit. Duracell. Duracell made, um, actually launched flashlights. Flashlights. Is there fit here? Is there fit? 
Type in the chat, Shane, Shane, Shane says there's fit. Shane, can you unmute yourself and tell me why you think there's fit? What transfers from Duracell to flashlight? I mean, because like, what else are you buying batteries for? You know, I feel like every time I'm running out to get it, it's for like a TV remote or a flashlight. Okay, but hold on. We're not talking about complementarity. We're talking about when you think of the brand Duracell, what comes to mind? Duracell, you think of what? Batteries, power. Power, long lasting, right? So those power and long lasting actually transfer very well to a flashlight. Regardless of what batteries you have it, of course, they'll want you to buy the Duracell batteries for a Duracell flashlight, but you would buy the flashlight because you want a flashlight that is shame, long lasting and powerful. You see how it works? Don't think of the compl how, you know, if it's complementary, think of whether or not the associations transfer. Duracell also tried to launch cameras. They were thinking of cameras. Anyone thinks you can use, um, you can sell Duracell cameras, meaning do the associations transfer? Is there fit? Anyone? Is there fit? I see a quizzical look on Tapio's face. Tapio, tell me why you have that look. It's like, ah, Tapio, unmute yourself. Tell me why you have that look. I was still stuck on, on the, the battery and the Duracell bunny. The, oh, you're talking about the, um, the, the, the flashlight? Yeah, sorry. Okay. A little bit of okay. Slow, um, slow processing speed. Okay, no problem, no problem. A lot of people are saying yes. A lot of people are saying, wait, I'm, no, I'm looking at the wrong one. No, no, Mary, talk to me. Unmute yourself, Mary. You said no. Talk to me. I can't connect the camera and battery because the, I don't think the camera uses battery. Well, okay, again, we're not talking about complementarity. So you have to move away from that idea. So you have to think about which associations that come to mind with the battery, power, long lasting, do they transfer easily to the extension, all right? Thank you, thank you so much. Magna, you said no, that's a stretch. Talk to me. Unmute yourself. Magna, no, yeah. that's, yeah, go ahead, please. I think I don't associate uh, a camera with like, you know, Duracell because I feel that it is a stretch. Yes, I can see, um, you know, a torch or, uh, you know, something like that, but not a camera. Right, right. Again, here's what I want you to do. You have to break it down its component parts. Think of Duracell and see what transfers. Some people might say, I do want a powerful, long-lasting camera. But after fit, we have to think of this, Magna. The, I, I'm going to go past this. Uh, leverage. We have to think of leverage. Even though they transfer, do these associations give the new extension and edge? Do they give the brand an edge in the new category? Will you say the first thing going to go and find is a camera that's really powerful and lasts long? When I'm buying a camera, that is the, that's the clinch of me. It has to last long. Huh? No. No, I want a camera that has good acuity, that gives me sharp photos. Hmm? I want 200 sharp photos rather than 2,000 dull photos. It lasts long and the photos are crap. They don't look good. They don't look good. So, so that's the next one. Fit, do the associations transfer? Leverage, even if they transfer, do they give you an advantage in the new category? In this case, with the camera, the, the power and so on might transfer, and long lasting might transfer, but it does not necessarily give it an advantage. All right. Do you ask, Miguel Fredo, do you ask for, I want a powerful camera? Can I get one that lasts long, please? Have you gone into a store and have asked that? I want one that lasts long. No. I, no. If I'm looking for a camera, I look for what has um, the best quality. Best yes, quality. the photos. You want sharp photos, Miguel. You want sharp photos. You don't want... So So these associations do transfer, but they do not provide, Miguel, leverage. 
for Duracell in the camera category. So Duracell should not get in the camera business because they cannot leverage the associations. Are you with me, Miguel? It doesn't matter if it transfers on. No one is going to come and say, I want that Duracell camera. It's going to last long. Okay. Apple. Think of Apple and a car. Apple actually thought of launching a car. When you think of Apple, what comes to mind? Type in the chat. What comes to mind? Type in the chat. iPhone software tech, computer reliability. Interesting, home. Reliability is a good one. Reliability is a good one. iPhone tech, design, exclusivity. Wow. Exclusivity, design, quality, tech. So if you think of an Apple car, interesting. All of these things could transfer. All of these things, tech, design, reliability, tech, right? All of these things, innovation, interface, user-friendly, all of these things actually could transfer to a car. So do you think Apple could launch a car? I mean, it will take a long time, but could they, in reality, launch a car and transfer those associations to the Apple car? Anyone? What do you think? Steve Tang, what do you think? Unmute yourself. You think they might be able to? Uh, yeah, I think they might be able to because there is that uh, extensibility uh, from, yeah. from all of this. From the Apple brand. Yeah, it can be extended. It can be extended. because, And the way we do it, you have to do it systematically. Think of what the brand stands for, what associations come to mind with the brand, and see if you could transfer them to the extension. And then once you do that, does it matter? In this case, design, tech, reliability, all these things now matter with these new cars. You want reliable technology in your cars, right? And you want it to be honest too. You don't want it to be like Tesla giving you the incorrect driving range that you could drive, but you want it to be reliable and, and truthful. That's wonderful. You know, I did this mock lecture before and used this and I wasn't convinced. You folks convinced me. I will buy an Apple car. I buy an Apple car. So that is fit. Do the associations transfer? Leverage. Do they make a difference? Opportunity. Does the extension have the potential to generate sales? Does it have the extension, the opportunity, the potential to generate sales? Will people buy it? Who are these people who will buy it? Apple. Could be Apple users. Could be anyone who drives an electric car, right? So let's look at these. Fit, remember fit? Do, do any associations transfer leverage? Will it make a difference? If they do an opportunity, people will buy it. Let's look at this. Perfume made by Zippo. Zippo makes lighters. Will you buy Zippo perfume, which is a real thing? Is there fit, leverage, and opportunity? If, you, if, if there's no fit, you stop. Stop evaluating, stop. If there's no fit. If there's fit, does, is there leverage? Does it provide you with an advantage? And fit means do the associations transfer. Give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down, please. Electronic. Thumbs up if, if there's fit. Thumbs down if thumbs down if there's not. Oh, wait. Aaron says yes. Aaron says yes. Anyone thumbs up if it's fit, thumbs down. You can do it on the screen on, on, on your, your profile. Wow. Aaron says, yes, there's a fit. I didn't think that. Aaron, you put on your mic. What's a fit? What transfers here from Zippo perfume, Zippo lighter to Zippo perfume? I suppose I think of Zippo's flame. It's hot. It's enticing. Oh. Leads the way. Just very strong. So and, and, you know, perfume, you want to attract attention also. Kind of so you, you want to be on fire. Way. All right. Sure. Why not? <laughs> All right. Dunja had the music. Talk to me. Do you agree with him that? That transfers fire, heat. Yeah, I couldn't unmute myself. I'm sorry. My name is Dunya. Dunya. Um, Dunya. Yeah, <laughs> you couldn't know that. Um, not at all. I'm not, you me know. Like, I've, I'm from Eastern Europe, and Zippo is like a lot of relating to um, luxury. So oh. maybe that part could translate. Oh, oh um, yeah. Because yeah. everybody That's smokes over there uh, cigarettes, and, and like, um, I guess yeah. the, the perfume could okay. play into that part of the brand. That's interesting. You know, I didn't do this before, but I'll just do it quickly as you brought it up. 
Um, elastic brands are more stretch. Uh, brands are more stretchable, and brands positioned on luxury, such as Ralph Lauren, they actually transfer quality. As Dunia brought it up, quality very easily to multiple categories. Quality. So Ralph Lauren, they make paint, which you wouldn't think about. They make furniture, lighting, all of that. They sell so many things that are not related. Bedding to the initial clothing and perfume that they've made um, because they transfer prestige or quality. So there, there is the fit, right? Quality can be applied to so many different categories. Brands that are functional like Clorox, they cannot transfer. There's not that elasticity or stretchability, all right? But luxury brands, Dunia, thank you for reminding me. I wasn't going to talk about that. So Zippo Mike, okay, what about this? Bud Light, making Bud Light seltzer. Anyone? Bud Light and Bud Light Seltzer. Yes, no? Yes, okay, absolutely. What what transfers? Type in the chat what transfers, please. What transfers from Bud Light to Bud Light Seltzer? Refreshing? Uh, oh, yeah, Steve, you stole it right from me. Drinking? Nah, Joy, that's what you do. So that doesn't transfer. That's just how you consume it. That can't transfer. It's not associated. Because they can make anything to drink and you'd buy it. No, more has to transfer besides drinking, right? Healthy drink. Interesting. But Bud Light, yeah, I guess Bud Light is healthy. Okay. Now, what about this? Sam Samsonite making Samsonite exterior wear. Is there fit? And remember, you start with fit. If there's no fit, stop the process. If there's fit, then you talk about does it create an advantage in the new category? Yes. Yes. Travel. What else? What transfers? Rugged like your luggage. Durability. I like that one. Durability. Or oh, Emily Park. Magna. Wonderful. Durability. Exactly. Wow. Joy. Wonderful. Lala Smith. Essential. Nicely. Now, let's look at this quickly. Guinness. How many people have had Guinness to drink? Guinness. Guinness. All right, type in the chat what comes to mind when you think of Guinness. Type in the chat, please. Smooth, dark. Why are you guys talking about me? What's going on? All right, anyway, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Smooth, heavy, excuse me. You're not talking about me. Famous, famous, okay. Dark, smooth. What about bitter? What about bitter? Bitter, is it bitter, slightly bitter? Right? What about its history and tradition? Anyone? Do you think there's tradition behind the brand? Ireland, Irish. No, no tr tradition because it's something that everyone, everyone is aware of. Tradition. Right. Okay. I was going to show you a, a, a video, but I'm not going to show you. I'm going to show you one now for an extension from Guinness. The Guinness Blonde. So let me show you that. Let me stop sharing. And let me just show you this Guinness Blonde commercial. You saw everything people listed, okay? Everything they listed about this. Here's the Guinness Blonde commercial. I'm going to, all right, share it now. And when you think, when you watch it, see which associations have they tried to transfer to this extension. Which associations? The award-winning Guinness Master Brewers proudly introduce new Guinness Blonde American Lager. Deliciously crisp and flavorful, brewed with mosaic and Willamette American hops, and using centuries-old Guinness brewing artistry and traditions. The first edition in the new Guinness Discovery Series. Discover a new age of brewing excellence for yourself. New Guinness Blonde American Lager. So what transferred? Type in the chat, please. What did they try to transfer? What did they try to transfer? History, tradition. What about the taste, though? The taste as well, right? Crisp, crisp. They said crisp, but the taste. Expertise, yes. So... Heritage, yes, tradition. So were these things provided with leverage in the light beer category or the blonde beer category, but it's supposed to be a lighter beer they were trying to make. Would it give it leverage, meaning would it make a difference? 
do you think it would matter? You say, this is a light beer. It's very refreshing and flavorful. Would people buy that? Yes. Yes. Sean Cartel, would people buy that? You think? Lala Smith, would people buy that? Probably not. Someone says, interesting. Interesting. Okay. Yep. So, so American wasn't transferred, right? They, they, because it's not known as an American bear. So they can't transfer that. But they did transfer tradition, the taste, and so on. Now, let's move on. We're going to actually, at the, almost at the end of this lecture, you're going to work on a, on, um, in a breakout room for about how long? How long, Kate? How long will they work on this? 10 to 12 minutes. Yeah, 10, 10, let's look at 10, 10. Yeah, 10 to 12, because when they come back, we can do it quickly and wrap up. Um, I'm going to show you some brands and we want you to think of an extension, a brand extension, so a completely different category. And you have to, when, you, when you're developing this extension, think of fit, leverage, and opportunity, right? Fit, do the associations transfer? Leverage, even if they transfer, would they make a difference Opportunity, who would buy this thing? Who would buy this extension? All right? And I want you to think of which associations transfer. Let's look at the brands. Lipton Tea, Bose, who makes headsets, electronics, right? And Firefox, which is the browser. Now, how many, how many rooms do we have? How many breakout rooms do we have? How many would we have, Tom? We have 12. 12? Okay. One to four would be Lipton. Five to eight would be Bose. And nine to 12 would be Firefox. Again, one to four, you do Lipton, create an, a brand extension. Five to eight, you do Bose, create a brand extension. And nine to 12, you do Mozilla Firefox. Remember, the extension is a completely different category a completely different category, right? And use fit to explain it. Flow, fit, leverage opportunity. Sorry, use flow to explain it. Fit, leverage opportunity. Is there a fit? Which associations transfer? Can you leverage it? Which of these associations give you an advantage in the new category? Opportunity, who will buy it? See you in 10. Bye. Remember, appoint a spokesperson from your group and everyone should speak. Everyone should speak. Appoint a spokesperson from your group. Appoint a spokesperson from your group. All breakout rooms are closed. Students are back. Oh. I see sharing, and uh, basically, we have. Um, we just have one slide to end. Remember, I still would like to see your face to be able to call on you. Let us go, let us choose different groups. I'll start with group <coughs> number one. Group number one. What's your brand? What's the extension? Let me hear the fit leverage opportunity. Go, please. Group number one. Hi, my name is Audrina. So um, my group got Lipton. Um, when we think of Lipton, we think of lemon, refreshing, soothing, healthy, um, and tasty. Uh, who would buy it? So our we thought of sort throat candies. Um, who would buy it would be? I need one. I need one right now. Send some to me. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Talk. <laughs> um, people who buy it will be people who are unwell or in the season of winter time. Yeah. Um, mothers, um, speakers, people who speak frequently. Um, I, I like parents, though parents, not just mothers. I'm a single okay, dad. Sorry, Parents, I'm sorry. Right. don't be gender biased. Don't be gender biased. <laughs> Lovely. So, so which of these associations provided with leverage? Which of these is refreshing? Which one of these? Soothing. Soothing. Yep, it's very much so and refreshing. I think, uh, Kate. I think we have a winner. Let that team in. Let that team in. They get in full scholarship. No, you don't get a full scholarship. But uh, anyway, great. Which team thinks they have a winner and can explain it just like that group? Because they're wonderful. Anyone? Type in the chat. I want to pick you. Only We can only take two more or one more, actually. Come on. I'm not seeing anything in the chat. I'm happy to go next. 
Who is that? What group are you? Uh, my name is Johanna Johnson. I'm a part of the Bose group with Sean Cartel and Steve Tang. Which, which, which number? We're group uh, five. Okay, go ahead. Let me hear Bose. Um, and so with Bose, we associated with quality, audio, bass, clear sound, um, and improved marketability because of the familiarity with the speakers. Well, all of these would have improved marketability. That's not an association, but the others are. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Um, and so because of that, we thought an extension would be a hearing aid. Oh, my goodness. Yes, yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Talk to me. And we looked at it in the flow framework. Um, we definitely felt like it was stretchable. Um, and we felt that it had the leverage because they're so focused on quality and clear sound. And quality and clear sound. Oh, fantastic. And who will buy that? Anyone who needs a hearing aid? Anyone? Yeah. Um, we think the opportunity is there for sure, um, especially because when you think of hearing aid, you don't think of a yeah. particular sound. I mean, a particular brand. Wow. And both already has the familiarity and it goes wow. across generations. So baby boomers are familiar with both as well as your Gen X and Gen Z. Yeah, yeah, so, this, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Time is running out, but this is fantastic. Johanna Johnson, Steve Tang, and whoever else was involved. Excellent. You have matched group number one. We can't take any more. We have to stop here. This is wonderful. I like this. This So I have to turn you right back over quickly to Kate. Kate, I toss it over to you. We have some wonderful students here, Kate. Johanna, you all are wonderful. Go ahead. Thank you, Professor Noel. We really appreciate all of your great insights today. What a great session. I hope everyone enjoyed this live class experience, which would be part of the high engagement component that you would experience in our programs. Thank you to all of you for participating today and taking part in some engaging conversations. We hope you did gain some valuable knowledge as well and are inspired to submit your application soon. The next deadline is September 7th for the final fall October start and applications are now open for spring 2024. We would like to offer an application fee waiver for October applicants and we'll follow up with an email with those that are registered today. Check out this slide to get the free application fee waiver code uh, before you submit your October application. I'm now gonna throw it back to Professor Noel for some parting words. Thanks everyone. Hi you all, thank you so much for coming. Today we spoke about branding, we spoke about uh, the flow framework, how to evaluate brand extensions, and finally launching a brand extension. You, you all did such a wonderful job. Sorry I couldn't hear more of you. Um, we do usually have more time during the live session to, to listen to more groups, but this is sort of a snapshot of what a live session would be like. We really look forward to having you join us. Um, our, although our program is online, we like to engage you and reach out to you and pull you in like if you're in a real class. There are no back seats in our class, unfortunately. We like to engage you. We like you here. I really appreciate having you here. I tell all my students this at the end of class. I want you to do one thing that will enhance your chance of success in our program. One thing, all right? And that could be reading an article about branding, reaching out and to connect with Kate on LinkedIn or connecting with me on LinkedIn. I'm also on Twitter uh, as Prof Hayden Noel, I think, or something like that. Anyway, um, it's there somewhere. Uh, but reach out to me, we can connect. Reach out to your colleagues or future colleagues you've met here, but do something to enhance your chance of success. And I always like to end by saying, I want each and every one of you to go out into the world and be successful. Ciao. Thank you so much for being part of this. I appreciate you all. Hope to see you here next year or next semester, maybe. Bye-bye. Thanks, Take everyone. Care.